Marsha Stephanie Blake co-stars in the Netflix series When They See Us about the Exonerated Five and their story from wrongful incarceration to freedom and eventual vindication. I'm Robert LaCuria, Senior Editor here at Gold Derby, and I'm here with the newly minted Emmy nominee, Marsha Stephanie Blake. Yeah. Marsha, congratulations on your Emmy thank nomination. You. That's so exciting. Thank, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Talk us to the morning of. Talk you through what? The morning of the nomination announcement. Oh, the mor morning of. Um, <laughs> that's an interesting morning. So I was getting ready for work. I had a table read for a TV show that I'm currently in, um, or that, you know, it's come out in the fall. And I had no idea Emmys were being announced. I did not know that I was in the four-year consideration category. It just was not on my radar, um, like at all. Uh, and I got a text, I was like in the bathroom putting on makeup or whatever. And I got a text from Ava DuVernay and it said, um, congratulations on your Emmy nomination, wow. And at first, I, I think I wrote back, what, what, what are you talking about? <laughs> and then I said, in my mind, I thought maybe the series had got nominated and she was sending this congratulatory message to everyone. Cause we were, we're all on this like group family thread, you know, a lot of the cast of when they see us. Yeah. And we, we send, you know, anything that big that's happened. Like when we were 23 million views on Netflix, we, we were on this thread and, um, any, anything that's related to the show, we kind of get on this family thread and it's all of us chiming in. So I thought it was one of those. I didn't realize it was just to me. So when I realized it was just to me, because I quickly looked up, I looked at it and um, I saw that it was just to me. And I thought, what is she talking about? But again, I still was skeptical. So I said, let me Google. So, <laughs> so I Googled because it really was just not on my radar, Rob, like just not on my radar. So I Googled it and it hadn't, it was still so soon that it wasn't online yet. But what was online were Nisi's nomination, Nisi, Nisi Nash's nomination was online, and so was Anjanu Ellis's, because they had announced, um, I, my category is supporting, so they had announced lead actresses prior, yeah. 10, 15 minutes prior, whatever, so that was already online. So I then thought that because of the group thread, I thought that Ava had accidentally texted me, and I was sure, I was like, oh no, she made a mistake and she's gonna realize she made a mistake. It's gonna be so mortifying. But I thought it was kind of funny and I was like, oh my God. But I still was happy for those women, of course. And I was happy that the series got nominated. I was happy about like everything. Um, I have a friend who's arriving right now with her twins. And so I'm just gonna tell her to go and find out, pay no attention to that. Anyway, so I was just very, very, I, again, I was confused and I thought it wasn't me. So anyway, um, I look it up and I, a good like five, ten minutes went by and I didn't write back. And also she didn't write me back because I wrote, what are you talking about? Let me Google. And she never wrote me back. But I think it's because she was calling. We got 60 nominations. So she was probably <laughs> texting and calling and fielding her own texts and everything else. And, you know, I, I just never heard back from her. So I thought, oh, I'm going to get an, a text message that says, like, I'm so sorry. I made a huge mistake. I meant to text me, see or ingenue, whatever. Anyway, in those 10 minutes, I was fine. I was getting ready for work. And then my publicist called. And I think when they called, I said, you were like, oh, my God, you got nominated for an Emmy. And I said, me or the series? And they said, no, you. I said, they, they called my name. They were like, yes, your name in this category, you as an individual. And that's when I knew it was for real. But honestly, there was a good 15 minutes where I was sure someone had made a mistake. And I still that like still not really real. <laughs> it's so lovely to hear because it's such well, the best thing about the Emmys is when you have um, people that you may not be expecting, you hope but you, you just don't know with the Emmys, who's going to get nominated, who's not. To see your name there was such a lovely surprise because watching episode three in particular, the episode that has been submitted to Emmy voters, you yeah. think, geez, that's a performance that you hope would get recognised, and it was. What does it mean to you as a performer to be recognised by the Academy in this way? Uh, oh, my God, what does it mean? It, it means so much in terms of, obviously, in terms of my career and this is really a recognition from your peers and people who are the, have themselves been through it and know what it's like to be an actor. And I've been in, I've been acting for, you know, 20, about 20 years and I've done a lot of theater. Um, so it's really nice to get recognition for 
TV work, which I honestly, I still think is, is relatively new for me. Um, I feel like I'm just getting into it. But also it means, for me, it really comes back to the five and also to the mom who I play, Linda McRae, that it means everything to me that people are recognizing their story as worthy of being told, that people are giving them the kind of love that they deserve, that they that has eluded them all these years, even when they got their settlement, it was still, you know, people, there were still people who would just approach them in a different way. Um, mm. and, and honestly, what, what makes me excited more than anything now is when I open up my Instagram or some kind, you know, whenever I see them on social media and they're getting love from everybody, they're getting love from all over the world. I mean, this thing is international and, it's just a very, very different thing from what they're used to because they were so vilified back in the day and they were children. Mm -hmm. So for them to be getting this love as adults and then to get, you know, the Emmy Awards to recognize them and to recognize their story as something special, is it means so much. And the fact that I play Linda McRae and she recently passed and she was very reluctant to tell her story and has always been reluctant because the only thing she remembers is being treated as a woman who had raised an animal. And so for this kind of love to be coming from all over the place is, I hope, you know, somehow she knows that it's happening. Um, she passed away in late March. And I just hope wherever she is, she kind of knows that this is happening and she's proud and she feels some kind of um, vindication and redemption and, and happiness, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So that's what it means. Yeah, and, it means a lot. And <laughs> Like what's wonderful is so many um, of the cast were nominated, Jarrell and Michael yeah. Ingenue and Misty, and it's um it's testament to a, a a really beautifully made series with amazing performances. And I asked this question to Jarrell, and I'm wondering what your response will be. What is how hard is it to play a real person? Because you've got to make them authentic, uh, but you've got to make the role your own. Right, right. And I mean, there's always a theatrical element. I mean, what's What's great and also sad about this story is we didn't have to push the theatricality. It's very, it's a very intense and traumatic and dramatic story. So I don't think any of us, and I think that's why we, uh, so many of us were nominated and the series is nominated and the director and, you know, it, the cinematography and so many elements is because like a lot of the work was done just from the story. Um, I think for me, my theater company, luckily, I'm with this theater company called The Civilians. And um, what we do is documentary style theater. We do investigative theater. And part of that is that we will investigate an issue and then we'll speak to the real people who are related to that issue. And then we will theatricalize them or we'll put, you know, we'll put the characters on mm -hmm. stage using exactly what the people said. Um, I don't know. It's it's, a, it's similar to Laramie Project. Most people are familiar with Laramie Project, but it's like that yeah. kind of thing. Um, I think it's a uh, maybe Carol Churchill actually started it, this kind of theater. And so for me, I've been doing it in theater for a while. Um, so it wasn't that unusual to play a real person. But I also know the responsibility of playing a real person is that even if the person is not alive, you have family members, you have friends who are all going to come up to you and give you their opinion on what you've done. And so there's a huge sort of burden that you carry with you knowing you're playing a real person that people know. Um, and so I was mostly honored to play her, but I was also scared. Um, but I also spoke to her son. I spoke to her, thankfully, before she passed away, I was able to speak to her at length. Um, and just get her cadence and, and her, her tone and the kind of person she was. She was very, very funny and self-deprecating, but strong. She had a, a sort of a coarse voice for this tiny woman. Um, and then I spoke to, we had family members who visited the set. We had friends who visited the set. And any time they'd come around, I'd ask them, what was she like? What do you remember about her? Um, and, you know, I would just try to mine as much as I could from anybody, from anyone. And everyone is so lovely about it. And, um, you know, but you're still scared. And honestly, for me, the most important moment, even more important than the Emmy nomination was when Antron came up to me after he had seen it. I hadn't even seen it yet. 
And I saw him at an event in New York and he came up to me and he's not really, or he wasn't a very touchy feely person. He's kind of reserved. Um, and he came up and he gave me a big hug and he had tears in his eyes. And he kept looking at me, like pulling away from me and looking at my face and then hugging me and then pulling back and looking at me. <laughs> and he just said, oh my gosh, you were my mom. You played my mom so well. You look like her, you sound like her. And I just started crying. Of course, I'm about to start crying now. Um, but that meant, wow. and this was after his mom had passed, and that just meant so much to me because I thought, in a little way, I'm helping preserve this memory of his mom in a positive way. And it's something for him to, to see and relate to and that he also approved of it. So, yeah, it, it's, yeah. it was a big burden, but uh, it, it means so much that he... Gave his approval, thank God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I mean, speaking of, what's the emotional toll on you personally to be part uh, of a project like this and what it means? You know, I'm not going to pretend like it was easy because it was not. But I think what Michael and I kept reminding ourselves, Michael K. Williams, we kept reminding ourselves every day, whenever we'd have these scenes that would tear our hearts out, um, was that we were just pretending. And at the end of the day, real people went through this. And so uh, in a way, it helped us to just remind ourselves that as much as we felt traumatized by what we were going through as actors, um, it was doubly so and triply so for them because they actually went through it. And um, it made us feel like we had a responsibility to get it right, but also that, like, you know, we, we didn't have much to complain about because we were just pretending that it was happening to us, but it had happened to real people. Um, I did have moments where I couldn't go straight home after a scene uh, because I have small children. And I felt like I just had to get my mind sort of out of it um, because it was hard. Um, and Ava is really wonderful. Ava is like such a, like a, a great leader to have when you're having these emotional scenes. She would be crying with us. I mean, the DP would be crying. <laughs> Other actors would be crying. Video Village would all be in tears. All of Video Village will be, would be in tears. Um, and that was lovely. They they offered us grief counseling on set if we needed it because they knew that we were reliving these moments and we were sort of being as real as we could about them. Um, so we had a lot of support. Um, but yeah, there were days where I just couldn't go straight home. I had to take a long walk before I went home to my children. Yeah. yeah. You know, Linda is, she's such a devoted, unflinching mother in this yeah. series. And I wonder as a performer, what do you draw from as inspiration for playing someone desperately supporting her son in such horribly difficult circumstances? Um, I guess I, I thought, because I have a nine-year-old, and in my mind, uh, a 14-year-old, 15-year-old in 1989 is about equivalent to a 10-year-old now in terms of just yeah. worldliness and, and um, you know, street smarts. This is a kid who had had gotten into no trouble, like no no trouble even at school. You know, he loved baseball. He loved like kid things. He 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 didn't even he wasn't even messing around with girls yet. You know, there's no. It was a completely innocent person. So in my mind, I thought, what if someone had accused my nine year old of this just insane crime? And I knew my child, and I just knew it was not possible. So there was that, just me as a mom thinking, how would I feel if this, if somebody said this about my kid or about my, one of my nephews who I just know is like a good kid, you know? Um, and then I, I also got the chance to speak to Miss Linda and I saw that her resilience and her strength was not BS. It was not put on. She was tiny and maybe a part of her being so strong was because she's tiny, but she was a beast. That woman was not going to let anyone tell her what her son had done um she was incredibly strong and incredibly outspoken um and i think it ripped her heart apart that she couldn't help her son in the end you know in the end that she could not bring him home it was her only child too you know she didn't have another other kids at home to sort of distract her from what was going on 
He was her mm. only child, her only son. And she put all her energy into him. And so she was going to use all that energy to fight for him. So I drew from her mm. mostly. Yeah. 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 You know, with, um, with things like Charlottesville and Trayvon Martin, Eric Garner, um, this oh. series seems even more relevant against yeah. the backdrop of those events. What do you hope that people will ultimately take out of watching this series? Um, no, no, Mama. <laughs> this is my my, my <laughs> Speaking own, of. hiding. I know she's hiding behind me. Um, what do I hope people will take? Honestly, I I hope that people will. I know people get angry watching it. I know people get depressed, and people think it's triggering and all those things. And if you can make it through all four parts, because it is rough, and part four in particular for me, I had to take my time to watch part four with Jarrell and Nisi. Yeah. Um, I think if you can make it through, even if you can't, what you should do is use your anger, use whatever you're feeling, and put it towards something, some kind of activism. Put it towards um, talking to young people in your neighborhood. It doesn't have to be anything big. No one's asking you to go protest in front of the White House. Like, although that would be nice. But, um, you know, <laughs> take, take whatever you're feeling and put it into something. Do, I did a viewing in my neighborhood of the, of the parts one and two and that we had a talk back with just moms and kids and dads in the neighborhood. And we, we invited a judge and we invited a, um, someone from the DA's office and we invited an attorney, a defense attorney, and then, you know, just sort of people who will come into contact with these kinds of problems all the time and kinds of issues all the time. And we talked about what you should and shouldn't say to the police if you get pulled over, who you should call, what you should do as a parent, what you should do as a kid. Um, and that to me means more than any big protest or anything. We, we start, you know, start in your neighborhood. Start just talking to people um, yeah. so that if, some, if someone has something like this happen, they know who to call. And maybe it's somebody who's their neighbor, you know, somebody who's just fam more familiar with the justice system than they are. So Yeah. Well, this series means a hell of a lot to so many people. Um, and uh, I'm sure you're getting a lot of positive feedback. But for the time being, being a little bit more superficial, enjoy yes. your time as an Emmy nominee. And good luck thank in the Emmys later. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Now, now that it's on my radar, I'm so petrified. <laughs> <laughs> it's real. Because it's happening. It, when it wasn't happening and I, you know, had no idea, I was fine. And now it's just like this impending thing. But thank you so much. I, I will enjoy myself. I'll wear a pretty dress and I'll just try to float around that night. Maybe that with lots good. of lots of champagne. <laughs> <laughs> always got to be champagne uh, thanks so much yes. for your time today thank you so much rob it's so wonderful to talk to you thank you for having me and derbyites make sure you check out goldderby.com make your predictions maybe you can predict Marsha as the winner and oh, um, wow. you, you, <laughs> you can compete against know it alls like me and subscribe so you can watch all of our other uh, interviews with great contenders like Marsha. thanks very much